My name is Brandon Dodd, and I'll be presenting with Bradley Newman and Joshua Rogers. An outline of what we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about cash flow diagrams a little bit, the concept of risk, um, evaluation of equipment alternatives, um, we'll talk about incremental analysis, risk evaluation and profitability, we'll talk about profit margin analysis, and give a brief summary. Okay. Cash flow diagram basically tracks cash through the project life. Um, a project life is a specific length of time over which the um, different projects is to be compared. When you're talking about project life, it's from the time that you initially put the first capital into the project and start buying up land and equipment. And at the end of project life, you always consider all your capital goods sold off and you always get money back from your land, whether that's the case or not. That's just, that's just how you compare the life of the project. Uh, this is necessary because you always want to standardize your project life for comparison so you have a measurement of which to really value these things. And like I said, at the end of the comparison, it's assumed that the plant's closed, everything's sold, and you're getting all of your capital money back. This is an example of a cash flow diagram. And as you can see, it's just it just charts your cash flows through time. When you're looking at profitability criteria, there are two main methods. You have a non-discounted method and a discounted method. And both these methods rely on three uh, basic criteria. You have a time criteria, a cash criteria, and an interest rate criteria. On, a NISC, on the non-discounted method of established profitability, um, the three criteria given time, cash, and interest rate. Your time criteria is based on the payback period, which is just the time required for startup to uh, recover the fixed capital investment. Your cash criteria is um, just your cumulative cash, cash position and um, based upon the worth of the project at the end of its life. You can, um, if you sum all your positive cash flows and divide it by all your negative cash flows, then you can get a, get a cash value ratio. And that can help you determine which project's better. As far as the, um, Interest criteria, it's based on rate of return over inventory, which is your average annual net pro pro uh, profit divided by your fixed capital investment. And for the discounted method, your discounted method pretty much assumes all your cash values flow back to a current value. So instead of worrying about future values, you put everything current value. So um, your time criteria is time to recover your fixed capital income when all your cash flows are discounted back to, to your initial time. And then your cash criteria is based on your net present value and um, your present value ratio, which is your present value positive cash flows divided by your present value negative cash flows. And then your interest rate criteria is based on your discounted cash flow rate of return which is the interest or discount rate at which the net present value of the project is zero. And um, it's basically your highest after-tax interest at which the project can break even. If you're comparing several large projects, of course your shorter payback period is more attractive. You, you, you want the shortest payback period possible. And of course, a higher net present value is more attractive. When you sum up all your cash flows, you, you, you want the project for the highest net present value. Um, the higher your discounted cash flow rate of return, the more attractive the prospect. And what you want to do is you want to you, you really don't have to worry about the payback period, but you want to you want to stat, like calculate your net present value for your project, and then calculate your once you calculate that, then establish your discounted cash flow rate of return, and then the lowest, the highest net present value with the lowest DCF ROR is your best choice. Okay. When you're comparing several large projects, if they're mutually exclusive, this is a basic algorithm you can compute to find the more attractive um, project. 
the first thing you want to do is you establish your minimum acceptable rate of return. In step two, you want to calculate your net present value for each project using the interest from step one. In step three, you want to eliminate any projects with a net present value. Those, those are not going to be most attractive, so you've got to get rid of those. And in step four of the remaining projects, select the project with the highest net present value. a little bit about the concept of risk and acceptable return. Companies will usually set benchmarks and hurdle rates. These are just uh, rates of return that they want to receive from their investments. Um, they often set values of return rates that are reflective of the risk conditions. An example of this would be a company looking to build a new plant in a, a location that's already well established for the product that they're going to be selling, but they may have a low uh, rate of return on that, say, 12%, or they could go to a brand new location where just some preliminary uh, trials have been conducted of how consumers will use their product, but they have no other history there, but they could also get a higher rate of return, about 40%, and the company has to decide if that risk is worth the higher, um, higher return they will get or not. So some evaluations of equipment alternatives. If you have the same expected operating life, but different operating costs and initial investment, you can uh, compare with the net present value, which is just taking your initial cost and adding your annual operating cost and moving all those back into present at time zero, as Ben said. And if you have different expected operating lives, you can use an equivalent capitalized cost method, just taking the present value and multiplying it by 1 plus I to the N, uh, plus your yearly operating costs in the future, annualizing those all divided by 1 plus I of N minus 1. You can also have for the equivalent annual operating cost, you take your capital investment and annualize it over time, and then add your yearly operating cost to that. And you can also use a common denominator method. Now this is just comparing equipment over the same amount of time. If you have some equipment that has a lifespan of seven years, another piece of equipment has a lifespan of four years, comparing them over a 28 year period would give you a basis for comparison of the two and of those you would choose the lower cost. There are also incremental analysis for retrofitting facilities. This is when you have to, uh, you already have a piece of equipment but you're looking to upgrade it or replace it. There are non-discounted methods. Uh, one of these has to do with the rate of return of incremental investment which is your incremental yearly savings over your investment. And the incremental payback period is just the inverse of that ratio. There are also discounted methods by using capital cost, which is where your incremental net present value is equal to the uh, project cost plus the yearly savings that are moved forward to the present time and the operating cost methods, which is just the equivalent annual cost, which is just taking the same formula as above and annualizing it over a period of time. <coughs> okay, well, I'm Brad, and for the last leg of the presentation, I'll be covering risk, uh, evaluation and profitability analysis. Um, up until now, we've kind of made the uh, assumption that uh, risk or all of our cost estimations involved in little or uh, just kind of neglected the uncertainty values. But however, if you recall back in Chapter 7 and all those cost estimation procedures, there was quite a bit of relative uncertainty involved and uh, that lies with the variation of those parameters. Um, uh, first, uh, the variability, the very root of the variability